Hello folks and welcome to the best tutorial on how to sculpt demons. <laughs> okay, that was just a joke. Now what we're actually going to go through in the first uh, preparational phase of actually creating a model and something that actually looks good in terms of design and concept is of course the most important part in any design is gathering reference. Okay, uh, because when you're actually modeling an unrealistic things well basically unrealistic meaning uh, that it does not exist in our physical world we would like to get as much information uh, and actually get a clear concept of what exactly maybe not exactly but what's our actual model going to look like and the final piece and make sure everything looks interesting in terms of design and build now what I'm actually trying uh, what I'm actually going to try and attempt to do right now is to create a demon sculpture uh, from start to finish in ZBrush and with a little bit of help from 3ds Max in terms of poly modeling and show you a back and forth um, show you a back and forth workflow of exactly how I do it um, some people may actually do it better but this is exactly how I do it <laughs> okay now let's get started okay guys now what you can actually see on the screen are some of the images I've gathered from Google uh, the most magical place you can go to for reference, of course. Um, and let me actually quickly explain uh, what was the idea behind actually gathering these references. Now, since I'm now using one clear concept for the sculpt itself, and we're creating the design from zero from multiple sources of information, uh, we would actually need to consider quite a few things. One of them would be the anatomy of the model itself, uh, whether it's bipedal, uh, whether it walks around uh, the room like a goat, <laughs> or any other way the actual model, uh, the actual creature itself, let's refer to it as a creature, uh, would actually uh, begin to be mobile. Now, uh, what I actually gathered the information for in terms of anatomy is, well, realistic example of teeth, realistic example of the actual skeletal structure which we can actually modify and of course just a little bit uh, more detail such as the hands uh, bending and the actual joints uh, to actually get the correct uh, amount of bony structures in uh, let's say the elbows uh, at the wrists uh, or let's say at the beginning of the poem itself and of course some muscle reference from the anatomy books directly from there now uh, i'm not heavily relying on reference for anatomy because i've done a, a quite a lot uh, of sculpts in terms of anatomy itself and of course uh, basically i have this principle um, sculpt what you see and sculpt what you know at the same time okay so this will actually allow us to first of all speed up the process and get a much more organic result. Uh, now we have an atom here from the realistic realm so we can actually bend it and actually create something interesting uh, and unreal based on something that is already in our physical world such as the human anatomy or let's say uh, anatomy of a goat or any other animal because I'm going to use uh, legs such as these and they're quite similar to a goat. <laughs> okay, perfect. Now, let me move on to this place over here. Now, you can actually see that there's no specific example of a demon in here uh, itself or let's say what I'm actually trying to create. But what these references actually allow me to do is create a mood for the creature I'm actually trying to sculpt. Uh, this would actually allow me to get the background story of the character, exactly where it's from, and maybe, for example, let's say your creature lives in the desert, right? It would have dry skin, uh, maybe a bit of discoloration or darker eyes. Uh, basically, it actually mm, affects your character's character itself, uh, the way he, he, she, it actually looks like, and of course, uh, Maybe it can actually help you determine the type of skin it'll have. It'll help you determine exactly what we're going to be uh, doing with the overall detailing of, uh, detailing of it as well. And of course, the coloration. 
Now, when I sculpt something, I imagine it finished, I imagine it lit, I imagine it rendered, and in our real life world. And th these actually allow me to go into the mood itself. But this specific picture of uh, a, I think it's a album cover of some sort, uh, maybe for a heavy metal band, I really don't know, don't judge me. <laughs> But uh, at first I thought of giving uh, the demon itself some sort of a weapon. But instead of uh, just creating a gener generic demon which actually wields a weapon such as this here. Um, I thought maybe its weapon can actually be something like a musical instrument which I like a lot in this image. And uh, maybe it can do damage that way. So let's actually move on here. Now overall body shape. You can actually see in the middle here uh, that basically this is somewhat of the body shape I actually want. Now regarding the concept, I really don't know who it belongs to, but it's amazing work. I grabbed it off just from Google straight away. Uh, if you guys know who this concept actually belongs to, I'll be more than glad to give him his credits. And basically these are all from Google. Now this is for the body shape obviously and of course uh, these are here to actually inspire me for horns. And of course we're going to try a few different variations uh, which will actually concept in 3D and leave the best possible one in the production itself. Now this one is here basically for armor. Um, Maybe not in terms of design, but uh, in terms of different elements it may actually have. This is going to be very good. And of course, the armor. This is for armor here as well. And of course, I like the coloration of it as well. I mean, I want uh, the demon to, for example, look sad. Um, actually bringing some sort of emotion into the final image. So this actually looks quite quite something like I would like to achieve in terms of tone, color and also emotional transmission when you're actually taking a look at it. Plus, uh, take a look here exactly. Now, in terms of design, this is uh, well quite well concepted. Uh, if you actually look at the middle of the chest, there's a lot of detail in here. This instantly grabs your attention and actually drives your eyes farther down the actual armor itself and allowing it to rest. Okay, what else? Well, we covered the anatomy and basically these two. Now, this one I actually grabbed just because of eyes. Uh, he actually looks very mad, but this left, uh, no, this is the right eye. <laughs> well, it's left for me, but it's uh, most definitely the right eye. Uh, basically, uh, this one looks a bit more sad, and I'd like to use this side of the face to actually make mine look sad as well, playing a very mel how do you actually put it, monochrome symphony, which actually brings sadness into the people's hearts. Now this one uh, I like in terms of silhouette itself. It looks very interesting and I would love to incorporate some parts of it. And of course this guy here, um, not much in terms of design, but of course the silhouette is amazing. <laughs> um, well, you may actually ask what makes a silhouette look amazing. Instantly when you look at a silhouette, you have to know what character it is. As simple as that. It has to be that unique. And the more elements the character actually has, um, the better his silhouette looks. Okay. Well, um, very good. Let's actually move on to zebra stand and actually start sculpting with uh, Dynamesh, create a concept, maybe trash one or two, and see exactly what we're going to get. Thank you. See you in the next lesson.